Gentlemen, today we'll be finishing up my series on hats with the Panama hat and other summer hats here on Big Pretty Man. Hi, and welcome back to Big Pretty Man, the channel for the extra large man who wants to live his life large and in charge. I'm your host, Timothy Big Pretty Crow, I'm a wardrobe and lifestyle consultant for the extra large man. Okay guys, you know I'm standing here now, it's actually toward the end of February in Philadelphia here on the East Coast. It has been extremely cool, cold winter. Uh, you know we've had over, over a foot of snow in some parts of the Pennsylvania. It's actually been up to almost four feet of snow. But in the last week or so it's went from about you know the, the lower 30s and by this weekend it's actually going to be 56 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's actually warming up and that's a sign that spring is on its way. And with spring coming, I know that it's getting time for me to put away my beloved um, winter hats, my warmer hats of uh, felt and, um, and beaver, you know, my, my trilbies, my fedoras, my beloved Homburgs and bowlers, and, you know, and my, even my flat caps, um, you know, and start to think about the summer uh, summer hats so you know because we're trying to wear wool as I said earlier about the flat cap trying to wear wool on your head when it's can be up to a hundred degrees Fahrenheit and, you know it's just you're just gonna boil your brain so and I actually I have to say right up front I am not fond of summer I'm not a big summer fan my favorite time of the year of course is in the fall when the air is a little crisper a little, it's a little cooler uh, you know, and you have those wonderful smells of autumn. Uh, but whereas with summer, I'm a big guy and a lot of big guys with a six to weight, summer can be torture. The way I look at it is if it's cold, I can always bundle up and get warm. However, if it's hot, I could strip buck naked. I am still going to be hot. Yeah. So, but either way, I try to find ways to stay as cool as I possibly can in the summer because you know I can in the summer I sweat like a sick horse or as we used to say when we're, uh, where, I'm, where I'm from in the south you know uh, I sweat like a whore in church <laughs> I can just sweat buckets so you know I, it's always important when you know with a big guy to try to stay cool so of course I'm also um, bald so therefore hats become essential to me because uh, I'm just not really fond of getting a sunburn on my head and the skin is very sensitive on the top of your head. So you know of course um, you want a hat that can ventilate you know so the best ones to get are, uh, are um, straw hats or in this case a palm hat, um, a weaved hat, and the Panama. I think the Panama is one of the most fashionable and um, you know also practical hats for the summer. When you have to dress it up and you need a hat to go with it and it's going to be hot, well you know and I'm going to do also a video on uh, casual business dress um, for, for the summer but just as a little hint you know throwing on a linen suit you know or maybe a seersucker suit in the summer with a you know in a light color maybe some blue use the cool colors um, of lot blues and greens and all in between um, and throw yourself on a Panama hat you look you know you look great um, it looks very fashionable now a little bit about the Panama hat the Panama hat is actually not from Panama it's actually from Ecuador um, it be you know um, and it's actually is a woven hat made from a certain type of palm um, and it's you know the best ones are actually handmade um, you know the, with a you know and sometimes they have over 4,000 uh, weaves within a square inch you know those are the really highest quality uh, Panama hats and, the, and the, the handmade ones which are getting harder to find because used to all Panama hats were handmade today they're mostly machine made but still whether it's machine made you, you know or it's handmade and the handmade ones can be extremely expensive <laughs> Um, but either way, whether it's a cheap one or it's an expensive one, you know, the Panama hat just looks great. You know, it kind of has a very, um, it's very similar in shape 
almost exactly to a um, to to a um, fedora, you know. So that you know, you have the same wide brim, you have the same tall crown, the a deep pinch, the crease in the top. Um, so it's a very fashionable, you know, it's a very fashionable hat. They, I find that they look good when you wear cream-colored um, suits or cream-colored um, sports jackets or blazers. You know, with like I said, with more of the cooler colors. You know, it can be a very breezy hat. You don't get much more breezy than you do with the, with the Panama hat. Now, the reason that it's called the Panama hat is because during the gold rush in the early uh, 19th century. Uh, men started seeing uh, people in Panama wearing these type of hats and they started calling it the you know and they started wearing it and they started calling it the Panama hat. He started to gain more popularity when Teddy Roosevelt, President Teddy Roosevelt visited Panama for the Panama Canal and he was photographed a couple of times wearing the Panama hat and it, then of course what the president wears it's kind of like the way I talked about with the fedora and the trilby um, you know what the uh, what the royalty wore in the you know in the UK um, became popular well sometimes when the president wears something it becomes very popular um, so when you know when when Teddy Roosevelt put on the, the Panama hat it became popular but it is a great hat um, the but um, there is one problem that I find especially for big guys um, and it is that we sweat so much like I said I sweat buckets I sweat like a sick horse so when you sweat that much you know especially if it's really really hot and you're trying to wear a Panama hat on a daily basis Panama can be an expensive hat either way, whether you, even if you go for the cheaper versions. I won't even tell you what I paid for this one. <laughs> but uh, you don't, you know, you start worrying about sweat stains, you know, because you sweat a lot from your head, at least I do, and the sweat stains can actually stain the hat. Now, for instance, with this one, and I try to protect this one, if you look, see that? Right, thank God nobody can see it. That is a sweat stain right in the top of the top of my head um, touches it. So, you know, so it is sort of concern. Um, however, I'm going to give you a little personal tip, a little, a little personal cheat, <laughs> a hack, um, to help protect your hat, your, your Panama hat. Now, um, a lot of the Panama hats, of course, come with a nice, um, they have this nice band inside that helps soak up some of the sweat and that's good because if not it would leak over and actually stain the inside of the rim here. Um, so that's actually very good however it's still going to stain it like you saw on the top if you wear it you know as a daily wear hat. So there's basically two ways to solve this. You can either get two Panama hats and use one that you only wear for you know for big events for barbecues or mixers or yacht parties or you know or, the, or those type of summer activities more formal um, activities where you want to wear a nice hat that's not blemished or sweat through you know and then have the other one that's just for your knock around daily wear and let it you know let let what let, what what come come what may <laughs> with that hat but even that, that you know I just kind of see that as kind of a a waste of a expensive or even a semi-expensive hat. So I actually found a little answer to that. Um, what I do, and I'd highly recommend this, is I get myself every year basically a toss-out, a seasonal toss-out hat. And the one that I get is usually made of Toyo. Now Toyo is rice, is rice paper. It's actually, this is a paper hat. So there's, it's rice paper that has been shellacked, usually with, um, you know, sometimes they use cellophane, sometimes they use, uh, they use um, you know, shell actual shellac, sometimes they actually use a form of plastic, usually I don't like the ones that are plastic, they don't look right. But either way, th this paper then looks very much, it's basically an artificial straw. So I like to, to get, you know, and the, but the good thing is they're, hor they're very inexpensive. And they're, you know, um, but they can look very good. It actually, a lot of people won't even notice um, that it's not an expensive or nice hat. But it's, you know, you can get them as pretty cheap. 
It doesn't matter. It's a 20, you know, you can get, get these cheap hat and it doesn't matter what you do to it. In fact, I'll even show you an example um, of one from my one from last year. You know, I still have it. I'm kind of glad I did show you an example. Um, and it's this one here. And I wore this hat. It's a little banged up, as I said. Um, this was my daily hat, kind of like my, my flat caps were my hats through the, um, you know, th through the, the fall and the winter. This was my kind of my daily hat when I was just out and about. You know, this was the hat that I commonly wore. Now, you know, um, and how much did I pay for this Toyo hat? Well, this paper hat that looks like straw? $20. Yeah, $20. You know what? And even this one's, this took, this went through the, the big and tear of last summer. And it was a hot summer. And um, it still doesn't look too bad. So it's starting to lose a little bit of its shape. And it's, you know, um, I didn't give it a lot of protection because it is just a toss out hat. And yes, you can even see this one was great. It also had the inside roll. But look at that, that, that sweat ring. Look at that. <laughs> now, that would have been on my Panama had I been wearing it all the time, and that ain't happening. So, you know, th so this, you can even see it on the outside here, you know, these sweat stains. Like I said, I sweat pretty hard. But, uh, <coughs> now, excuse me. But the funny thing is with this hat is when I'd be out and about with it, when it was new, too, when it was, you know, um, when I first got it, it was actually pretty crisp. Uh, when I first got it, I, um, I, you know, people would often compliment me. I got a lot of compliments. Like, oh, I love your hat. That's a nice hat. Where did you get that? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I just played it off. They didn't know the difference. Um, but the beautiful thing about, about this hat, so it looked good, about this hat is like, I could. it didn't matter what I did to it. It's, you know, it's a $20 hat. Um, you know, I used it from like um, June um, all the way up until September, almost into October. And then, you know, when you're done with it, you toss it. You can actually, as I said, you can wear it all summer. And then at the end of the, at the, end of the summer, you can use it to, um, as kindling to start your first, um, your first fire in the fireplace. I didn't with this one, but the, the one from the year before, it's, it's gone. <laughs> so, you know, and I advise that, you know, you can look online, a Zappo, I know, um, and San Diego hats, our San Diego company, they carry a lot of these hats. You can get them for like 20 to $30. Um, and they look pretty nice. And the good thing about getting a straw hat other than a Panama is you can get them in any of the shapes of the, the more traditional dress hats. You know, you can get you can get it in um, a trilby style. In fact, you know there are trilby straw hats are fairly common. You get a trilby style. You can get you can get a um, fedora style like this one or a safari style. Um, or you know, you believe it or not, you can even get them a bowler style. I love the bowler; it's my favorite hat. But even I bought that bowler. <laughs> I may have to try it just to give you guys, you know, give you guys a review of it um, uh, this summer. That might be one of my videos. If you if you like that video, let me down know about down below. We'll do an experiment on it. All right. But uh, either way, you know, um, wearing these type of hats, you know, a hair like this, then ca who cares what happens to it? Um, you know, it's it's pretty cheap. I mean, for twenty bucks, what is that? Like three or four bucks uh, per month for this for this hat. It more than served its purpose. You know, it's more than worth the money. Um, but, uh, so yeah. And uh, it's, other than that, you know, you can get um, some of the um, flat caps that are made in linen. And they are fairly cool. They're still a rag on your head, though. So they are going to get sweaty. Um, and they're kind of, you know, linen is not the easiest thing to always to clean. Um, I really do just suggest getting a straw hats. They're great. They keep the sun off your head. You know, they even, you know, offer um, ultraviolet protection. Um, and, you know, but yet your head can breathe. You know, they do have a nice, get the ones, like I said, try to get the ones with a nice cloth, uh, elastic cloth sweatband on the inside. You won't be sorry. And they, they don't look bad, you know, and people don't know the difference. So, you know, uh, you know so my advice, get you a, a straw or paper uh, straw hat. Um, you know, they'll work for the summer. And that way you can save your good hat, your Panama, for 
more special occasions um, and without ruining it. So that's my advice on um, summer hats. Um, notice that in none of my hats did I talk about uh, baseball caps because, you know, um, you know, I'm I, I'm not going really going to come down on baseball caps. I think this, like anything else, they serve their purpose. I think they're great to go running in, or, you know, or jogging. Can can you imagine jogging in a bowler, <laughs> or even a Jeff cap? I, you know, um, you know, a, a flat cap. I just you know, I maybe could see that, but you know, really baseball cap. You know, mow the yard, play baseball, that type of thing. Um, you know, I can understand having a baseball cap, but don't wear it for every occasion and every part of the life. Take it off and get yourself a good hat, you know. Um, and speaking of that, I'm going to end this um, series on hats with a little bit of a um, an explanation or, or a justification for why I like to wear the more dress hats, and, you know, as opposed to the more casual baseball caps. Um, you know, even though they're not quite as popular. And the reason is, is because just like any other type of uniform or certain types of dress, they have become symbolic in our societies, almost universally so. And they become certain archetypes. So, you know, that we respond to. I worked as a security officer for years. And I can tell you, when you, you know, when you put on a security officer's uniform, I'm sure cops get this. Um, I know from experience, people respond to you differently. Suddenly you are in some form of authority. Now, they may be thinking, well, you're a rent a cop, whatever, but still there is a certain, you know, there is a certain intimidation to it, you know, a certain sense of authority um, that people get because we're just programmed that way, you know? And if you think about how we express ourselves in life and throughout the years, you know, headwear is a huge sign of, you know, um, status, of vocation, or even religious, um, you know, um, affiliation. You know, um, you know, we think of, of police officers. We see a police officer hat or a fireman's hat, or you know, or how about the the uh, mitter of a bishop, or the habit of a um, of a nun, or the great turban of a Sikh. All of these bring up images in our heads and certain um, certain connotations. Um, you know that that we put to them. Well, here's the thing. Hats, more just dress hats and formal hats have the same type of symbolism. Often, even more subconscious that people kind of pick up through media, through movies, through all of this, even hats that aren't popular anymore, people still know where they fit in the symbolism and what they represent. Um, you know, with the with the Jeff cap, what do most people think of? They're going to think of the Irish. They're going to think of, you know, of an older, you know, the an older gentleman, you know, or middle aged gentleman. It's a very, you know, that type of hat. When it, if you think of my favorite, the bowler, you think of the British chap. I mean, it's automatically there. Like I said, the TV show Family Affair. We think of Mr. French. When I wear my bowlers, I get called Mr. French sometimes. Which that's not an insult. I like I like Sebastian Cabot, um, the man who played um, Mr. French. You know, so when you and when you wear a Hamburg, people it, it's the boss's hat. It's a very authoritative hat. You know, with the fedora, we think of either the adventures of Indiana Jones or you know, or, or archaeologist, or we think of you know the a, a, a gangster or a um, or a businessman. You know. Um, so, you know, each one of these hats, just like the clothing, conjure certain impressions on people. And you can take advantage of that. You want to look breezy and all that in the summer, but you want to and sophisticated, maybe, you know, get yourself the Panama hat, you know. It gives a certain Caribbean feel, gives a certain, you know, I've said old Florida feel, you know, of, you know, um, you know, if you, you know, if you want to make a big big impression, be the big man, get the respect, that's the Hamburg. You want to be, be look gentlemanly and well dressed, you know, and you know, get yourself the bowler, you know. Um, so all of these hats, you know, um, you know, you know, they conjure up something. Even if it's, you know, the trilby, which makes me think of my grandfather and older men. You know, when I get to be an older man, maybe I'll wear a trilby just so I get that association. Um, but, you know, you can take advantage of these. Use these hats. Use these images. 
you know, to project, you know, um, what you're trying to say about yourself, about your individuality, what you're trying to convey to people in certain situations, you know, you can use the hat. And that's a lot better than just throwing a baseball cap on your head. Yeah. Okay, guys. Well, that is actually um, all I got to say on the Panama hat and straw hats. Um, and in hats in general. I hope you've enjoyed this series on hats. I know I've had a lot of fun doing it. I've actually learned a lot doing research on these hats, um, you know, that I didn't already know. I knew a lot, but not, not all that I know now, so it's been a, a learning experience for me as well. And, you know, please stay tuned. I am going to be, I've got plenty more to come. You know, I'm going to be doing one on dating. I've been threatening that one for a while. I've had several people ask me. <laughs> um, you know, I, I'm going to be do, doing things on socks and we're doing things on summer wear for big guys and just casual wear in general on big guys. You know, I've done everything on, on dress up uh, on, and formal and, and business casual, but I haven't really done anything on the um, uh, on casual dress. So that's coming. We're going to talk, you know, we, we've got a lot of, we're going to talk about jackets. We're going to talk about coats, we're, overcoats. We've got a lot of stuff coming. So if you're enjoying my content, if you're enjoying my videos, you know, please not, um, be sure to give me a like, you know, also give me a share. Let people know about me, you know, share, share me on your, on your social media. Um, and if you want to talk to me, if you like, I love talking to, to uh, my, my subscribers and, and my viewers. Please shoot me a line down below. You know, I will answer you. I do read them all. And, you know, um, you can also message me on, on Facebook, on Instagram, um, on Twitter. You know, I'd be glad to hear from you. I'd be glad to talk, talk over fashion or big guy issues with you. So I, I want to thank you for your patronage for all, um, out there. Um, and until I see you next time, summer's coming. You try to be cool and stay pretty.